Welcome to the ProCut Train Smart online training module companion video. Please follow along as we take you through the proper and safe use of the latest machines from ProCut. Read all training material thoroughly for the most comprehensive information available. Using the ProCut lathe, you should be focused on two primary goals. First, limiting the lateral runout as measured on the pad mating surface of the rotor. Secondly, a flat, smooth, clean surface finish with no thickness variation. Why are these goals critical? Lateral runout greater than specification is the primary cause of thickness variation that leads to brake pedal pulsation. Also, a rough surface finish will cause brake noise and a potential customer complaint. ProCut rotor matching lathes can be used on vehicles as small as smart cars, up to and including medium duty trucks such as the Ford F750 with appropriate adapters and techniques. While the basic procedure for matching rotors is the same across all vehicle platforms, there are some vehicles that require special procedures, and all require the training and skill needed to operate the correct lifting device safely before attempting to remove wheels for this procedure. General setup for most vehicles on twin post lifts includes making sure the vehicle is in neutral, parking brake is disengaged, the traction control is disengaged, and the center line of the hub is waist high. For more specifics on vehicle setup, or if you are uncertain for any reason of the correct setup, please call the ProCut Service Department at 800-543-6618, extension 2. First, determine the side of the vehicle you'll be starting on. You always want to start on the side where the brake caliper is on your right. This way, you can do all the setup in the right side up position, making the second side even easier. Hang calipers with S-hooks provided in accessory kit. Never hang calipers by the brake hoses. When setting up the ProCut lathe, it's important to make sure that all mating surfaces of the hub, rotor, and ProCut adapter are very clean. Remember, you're trying to achieve a lateral runout of less than half the thickness of a dollar bill. A small flake of rust or dirt could change the outcome of that work. We suggest the use of an abrasive hub cleaning tool available from ProCut as part number 37-996. Select the correct adapter and spacers for your vehicle application. To find the correct adapter, go to our adapter search and look up the vehicle by make and model. The adapter search will tell you the bolt pattern, part number of the ProCut adapters that will work, past and present, and give you a picture of the adapter to help match it to the kit you have. Next, mount the adapter and select the best nuts for the application. Some wheel nuts will not fit well with the ProCut adapters, and you may need to use the nuts provided in either the 50-179 kit that comes with every lathe, or the optional ProCut 50-175 speed nut kit. For nuts from the vehicle or the 50-179 kit, evenly tighten all nuts in a star pattern by hand. Do not use an air-operated impact gun. The torque is too high and could damage the adapter. For nuts provided in the 50-175 speed nut kit, use a 12 volt or less battery-operated quarter-inch drive impact gun. Only 12 volt or smaller impact guns will provide the correct amount of torque to protect the adapters from damage. Even torque is important and you must tighten in a star pattern. When attaching the machine to the adapter, both the face of the adapter and the face of the lathe flange should be flush against each other so there is no space between them. You'll know you have it right if the drawbar knob spins in freely by hand. Due to the self-compensating design of ProCut lathes, the trolley must not be in a bind either on the floor or in either the vertical or camber shock travel range. Put another way, not all the way topped or bottomed out and not all the way cambered forward or back. Now tighten the drawbar by hand only. There are now two types of cutting tips offered by ProCut. The standard carbide tip, 50-742, 
and the optional polycrystalline cubic boron nitride, or PCBN cutting tip, 50-743. The standard carbide tip gives an excellent surface finish that is approved by all OEMs. The PCBN tip offers even better surface finish results and significantly longer life when used properly. All of our tips will have 1 dot, 2 dot, 3 dot corner reference marks. Always start with corner 1 and rotate the two tips in unison. Dots must always be facing up. Set up the stop cam by rolling the cutting tips in with the clutch knob to about an eighth of an inch from the outer edge of the rotor. Then loosen the thumb screw on the stop cam and slide on the rail until it is just to the left of the stop button on the micro switch. Next, center the cutting head over the rotor using one of the following methods. For speed lock cutting heads, part number 50-220, simply slide, center, and lock using lateral lock lever. For parallel arm G2X cutting heads, part number 50-1200 or 1250, slide, center, and lock using the lateral lock lever. Now select the correct position rotationally for the cutting process. The correct position is where there are no obstructions for the tool arms to encounter and where there is enough room to install the correct silencer for that rotor type. Rotate the lathe on the trolley by loosening the disc lock lever and retightening. Do not over tighten. Turn the motor on and push the start button to compensate the machine for lateral runout. If for any reason the machine does not show green lights within 60 to 90 seconds or less, stop and recheck the setup. Machining. With the machine compensated for lateral runout, begin the machining process with the scratch cut. Your goal with the scratch cut is to reference the thinnest part of the rotor as you will be adding your cut depth to this point. Measuring the rotor with a micrometer should always be part of the job. If you measure the rotor from outside to inside in three places, you'll be able to see if the rotor has taper as well as whether the rotor has enough material left to be machined and still be above minimum specification. Generally, you will be removing at least four thousandths per side, or eight thousandths total, from the rotor beyond your scratch depth. If there are gouges in the rotor, use the deepest gouge as the reference point. With the tool arm separated enough to clear the rotor, wind the cutting head in to about a quarter inch over the outer edge of the rotor surface and make a light scratch cut on both sides. Start on the inner side of the rotor first and then on the outer side as you can hear the rear scratch but can't see it. Snug the tool arm lock knob and zero set the dial so you have a reference point for the rotor face. Then loosen the knob and back off the tool arms and wind them into an eighth of an inch from the start point of your cut on the inside edge of the rotor. Repeat the scratch test to see if the cutting tips touch the rotor at zero. If not, establish a new zero reference and wind the tips in to the starting point paying particular attention to not hitting any obstructions like the hat of the rotor on the outside or the caliper bracket on the inside. The depth of cut you select is determined by several factors. First, the type of brake rotor. For standard size vented rotors on cars or light trucks, remove between four thousandths and twenty thousandths per side. For thin, solid rear rotors on cars, remove between two and a half thousandths and seven and a half thousandths per side. Other factors that will help determine the depth of cut are the amount of disc thickness variation, the taper of the rotor, amount of rust buildup, depth of gouges in the rotor surface, Lastly, and most importantly, the rotor's minimum allowable thickness or machine to specification must be adhered to. On the speed lock cutting head, each line on the knob represents two and a half thousandths. There is a stationary reference line for you to use when setting the cut depth. On the G2X cutting head, each line on the knob represents one thousandth. Once your depth of cut is dialed in, Lock the tool arm lock knobs and shut off the machine using either the micro switch by the cutting head or the main on-off switch on the electrical box. 
This is the last chance to double check setup before starting the cut. With the machine turned off, check the following. Tool arm lock levers or knobs, depending on model, should be tight. Cutting head lateral slide lock knob should be tight. Make certain the stop cam is in position. Check to make sure the drawbar is tight. Depress clutch knob for cutting head feed. Check the disc lock lever on the trolley to make sure it's snug, but do not over tighten. Next, install the correct silencer. There are three types depending on the rotor type you are working with. The 50-703 is the standard for regular size vented rotors on cars and small trucks. The 50-754 is for solid thin rotors on rear of cars. The 50-744 is for larger rotors on cars and trucks up through medium duty. All silencers should be installed completely over the rotor with the grooves in the blocks over the cutting tip screw heads and the spring behind the cutting head lateral lock lever or knob. Next, position the chip tray under the cutting action. Lastly, start the motor and stand clear of the lathe. When the cut is complete on the first side and the lathe is shut off by the stop cam, carefully remove the lathe from the vehicle by loosening the drawbar. Use caution as to not crash the cutting tips into any parts of the vehicle as you remove the lathe. Now, either install at least two nuts on the rotor you've just matched on the first side, or index the rotor to the hub with the crayon from the toolbox and remove the rotor to make sure it won't fall on the floor. If you don't take this step, then you will undo the perfect rotor hub match you just created. Rotate the clutch knob counterclockwise so the stop cam is not in contact with the micro switch. Next, open both tool arms enough so they will clear the rotor on the second side that is yet to be cut. Next, loosen the disc lock lever on the trolley and rotate the lathe so the cutting arms will feed in where the caliper was. Attach the lathe and follow all instructions the same as the first side. The second side should take you even less time as the cutting head and stop cam are already set up. Once the cut is complete and the stop cam is shut off the machine, it's time to wash and dry your rotors. Use a spray bottle with warm water and a few drops of dish soap to clean your rotors thoroughly. Remember, the smoother the surface, the less potential for a growl or other unwanted brake noises. Reduce the chance of a comeback by using sharp cutting tips, and cleaning the rotor properly after machining. Final steps. At this point, you've completed two critical tasks. First, you've matched the rotor to the hub by taking into account the imperfect nature of the hub and the stack tolerances from the hub and other components, thereby eliminating a potential pulsation comeback. Secondly, you've given the braking surface a new, clean, flat finish that is ready to be mated to the friction material. Now you must be absolutely certain that you do not jeopardize the fine job you've just finished. To complete the job correctly, the following must be done properly. If for any reason you must remove the rotor after completing the match machining process with the PFM lathe, be sure to match mark the rotor to the hub with a crayon so you can replace the rotor in that same position. Failure to do this will result in a complete undoing of the lateral runout correction you just finished. For this reason, it's always preferable to use the ProCut lathe last after all other suspension, hub, or axle work is complete and the wheels are ready to go back on the vehicle. Also, the lug nuts on the wheels must be torqued to manufacturer specifications and in a star pattern. Do not use an impact gun without the proper torque stick or a torque wrench. Uneven torque will cause the rotor to deflect and will actually induce lateral runout and cause the undoing of the nearly perfect brake job you just performed. Next, test drive the vehicle and follow brake pad manufacturer's recommendations for bed-in of new friction material. 
The ProCut rotor matching system is designed to perform exceptionally well, quickly, and efficiently. Like any tool, however, it relies on skilled, trained hands and an attentive mind to do its job correctly. That's where your talents come in. Thanks for watching this video. Now please take the online quiz to complete the first level of Train Smart certification.